Hi, this is part four in the AC tutorial series. Previously, we've taken a look at what AC is and how it's formed and phases and also complex numbers as well. And now we have to go back to Ohm's law because yes, Ohm's law applies to AC just as well as it does to DC. And it's basically exactly the same. You don't really have to learn any new formulas but you have to be aware of new concepts. So let's take a look at AC in resistor, inductor and capacitor circuits. Uh, let's start out with resistors here. Now, of course, you've got a voltage source here, which is AC instead of DC. Hence why we've got this like generator type symbol with the AC waveform. We've got a resistor here and current flows through your, your circuit. It's the most basic circuit you're going to get. And Ohm's law still applies. I equals V on R and rearrange that however you want. But instead of a DC voltage, which is just continuous, it never uh, changes. Although we have had a look at our stepped uh, DC responses in uh, the previous DC uh, tutorial series. So take a look at that one. But DC is basically one fixed steady state. But in AC, of course, you have a voltage which changes over time like this. And given that you've got a circuit with current flowing, if your voltage changes, your current also changes. Ohm's law for AC is exactly the same for DC, I equals V on R. But there's this word instantaneous here. So this is where it differs from DC. Because as I said, we've got a change in voltage and change in current. So technically Ohm's law only applies for one instantaneous value of time. That should be T there. So we'll take the case, of course, of a sinusoidal waveform here. Now, this formula here is interesting. V equals V max times, V max being the maximum value of the, you know, the peak value of the waveform, V peak, if you want. Uh, v max times uh, sine omega t. And you remember that W is not a W, it's an omega symbol. And remember, that's not the uppercase omega symbol, which is the ohm symbol. Uh, this is omega is actually the Greek lowercase symbol for omega. And what omega is, is simply 2 times pi times f, which is uh, the frequency you're talking about, and then multiply by time. So v equals v max sine omega t. What does this mean? Well, you might notice that this v is smaller than this v here, and sometimes you write it as like an italicized uh, v. This means the instantaneous voltage over here and also it will have an instantaneous current that's why we've got like a little v here and a little i here because they mean instantaneous values at one single point in time so i guess you could call that the instantaneous formula for the voltage source here so uh, the ohm's law simply applies at any one instant in time the current equals the instantaneous current equals the instantaneous voltage divided by the resistance. It's just basic Ohm's law. But the great thing about resistors is that they don't affect your current relationship to your voltage. They're a linear component. They have no phase shift whatsoever. This is why we've drawn the current waveform exactly synchronized with the voltage. Because when you put a resistor in an AC circuit, it doesn't change the phase of your waveform current at all. But because it's a resistor, it does normal resistory things. And when you put a voltage across it, there'll be a current that flows through it, and uh, you have a heat dissipated in the resistor. So, yeah, exactly the same as DC, except you're just dealing at every instant in time instead of just, oh, it's a constant DC value. So unless you need to, you can actually forget about all this instantaneous stuff, and you can just simply... Um, apply Ohm's law, AC Ohm's law, the, uh, I, the maximum current is equal to the maximum voltage divided by R. Simple, or the I, or if you're talking in terms of RMS, root mean squared, the um, RMS current is exactly the same as the RMS voltage divided by a resistor. It's basic Ohm's law stuff. So I just spent five minutes explaining it's exactly the same as DC. What's the problem? Um, well, you have to get into your mind that it, when you're dealing with AC, you're dealing in terms of phases and you're dealing in terms of instantaneous values. But you remember how we learned about phases in a previous video? Well, phases apply here. It's an AC circuit and the value is continuously changing. We're gonna have a phase angle. It's just that in this case, the phasor representation 
is because the resistor is completely linear and doesn't impact the phase at all, doesn't change the phase, phase at all. Our phasor diagram is simply like this, is the zero degrees here because we've got zero degrees phase angle. So the current at, at zero degrees phase angle is, the, is voltage at zero degrees phase angle divided by the resistance here. And that's our phasor diagram because it's at zero degrees, not 90, not anywhere. It's simply at zero degrees. So very simple and rather trivial, but you have to understand you're dealing with AC now, so set phases to stun. So moving on to inductors, how does it work? Well, very similar to resistors, almost the same actually, with one subtle difference, which you might or have already guessed from watching previous videos in the series. So our circuit is exactly the same. We've got our voltage generator here with the instantaneous value, Vmax sine omega t here. We've got a current flowing and we've got an inductor instead of a resistor. But look at the waveforms. They're now out of phase. So you remember from a previous video, I like to use the term civil. There are other ways to remember whether or not a uh, current is lagging uh, or leading in a capacitor and resistor circuit, but I like using civil because uh, what this basically means, C is uh, capacitor, L is inductor, V is the voltage, so with reference to the voltage. So the voltage is kind of used as like the reference point and I is uh, the current. So for inductors, it's just handy to remember that the voltage leads the current, or you could say that the uh, current lags the voltage like this. And likewise, for a capacitor, the current leads the voltage or the voltage lags the current. It's just a nice visual representation. I like that, but leave it in the comments down below if you've got a different way to remember that, or you just simply remember that in a capacitor, oh yeah, current leads the voltage in an inductor, oh yeah, voltage leads the current. So you can see that visually here at, at zero time point here, you can see that the voltage is effectively leading the current because the voltage is already high when the current is low like this. So just like up here, voltage leads the current like that. So they're 90 degrees phase shifted. And for a purely inductive circuit, this current is going to lag the voltage by precisely 90 degrees. So now we have a voltage current relationship, so to speak, so a, or a volt amps relationship, it's often called, and this is how it's expressed inside an inductor. And here's where we need to do that pesky calculus stuff again, which is not hard, done in the previous video. Calculus is really easy. This di dt term here is a derivative, and derivative just means basically a rate of change. In this particular case, amps per second. So the instantaneous voltage in time v is equal to the inductance, in Henry's of course, uh, multiplied by uh, the rate of change of the current over time in amps per second. So it's just a rate of change. It's basically saying how many amps does this current, if this is current, how much, uh, what is the rate of change, i.e. what is the slope of that value. I know we're dealing with a linear slope and this is a sinusoidal, but you know, a, a rate of change can apply to any shape uh, waveform. So the steeper that waveform, if it went like that, that would be a higher rate of change. It would be a greater derivative there. Um, but anyway, that is the volt amp relationship for an inductor. So simply the voltage on the inductor is related to the inductance of the coil uh, multiplied by the rate of change of the current. So that is the relationship there. That's really got nothing to do with Ohm's law over here. Now there is actually a volt amp relationship in resistors uh, as well, but it's instantaneous and linear. So it, it, that's why you don't really discuss it at all because it just, it, resistors don't impact your AC circuit, but inductors and capacitors, they do. That's why you need to know this relationship. So from our instantaneous value for our voltage over here, you can derive, I won't go through it, but uh, you can derive that the instantaneous current is equal to Vmax divided by omega L here, uh, multiplied by the sine omega T minus 90 degrees, because we have that minus 90 degree relationship. And that leads to Ohm's law for inductors over here. I max equals Vmax on omega L and I, and likewise just multiply by 0.707, IRMS equals V. RMS over omega L. You'll notice it's exactly the same as resistors. Um, current equals voltage divided by resistance. Current equals voltage divided by inductance. But you need to add that omega 2 pi F relationship in here. Otherwise, it's not going to work. 
And yes, we have to talk phases again. So um, I equals I max sine omega t minus 90. I won't derive get into there. But from there, we can take the voltage. We can uh, give that the reference value of zero because there's got to be a reference point somewhere. And in that, in, in that particular case, which is zero degrees, so our polar diagram is going to be, uh, there's our uh, phaser for V uh, with zero angle, because there's zero angle like that. And our current is going to be uh, minus 90 degrees like that, because the current lags the voltage. You remember? The current lags the voltage over here for an inductor. So that's all pretty simple for a pure inductive circuit. And just remember that we now have to include the omega term, which we didn't have to do for resistors. And now we get on to one of the most important concepts of AC when it implies to inductors. An inductor will have an AC resistance called an inductive reactance. So it's measured in ohms just like it was for a resistor, but a resistor is a pure, purely resistive element. It has no complex relationship uh, with the voltage and current, but inductors and capacitors do. So XL is what we use to represent this AC resistance or inductive reactance here. And XL, or the magnitude of XL, that's what those two lines mean. It means you strip out the sine uh, part of it, so neither positive nor negative, it's just the pure magnitude is equal to omega L in ohms. And because omega will have a specific frequency, it's 2 pi f, so at when, you know, at say 1 kilohertz for example, an inductor with a given Henry's will have a, an AC resistance in ohms, or an inductive reactance, of 2 pi f times the inductance in Henry's. So once again, just like regular Ohm's law, voltage on current equals the resistance, or in this case, the inductive reactance, which is omega L uh, in polar form, or phasor form, phasor notation, 90 degrees, because of that relationship down here. But generally speaking, we don't tend to use the phasor notation like this. It's more common to refer it uh, to, you remember the complex numbers video, I'll link that in if you haven't seen it, you shouldn't be watching this before you watch that. Um, and of course, we can convert polar to rectangular form, which is J omega. L. So the AC resistance or inductive reactance formula you usually remember for inductors is XL. Notice that it's not the magnitude anymore because it includes, it can include a uh, negative uh, component, is J omega L. So that is the inductive reactance, which is just measured in ohms, just like a resistance, which is why, you know, you can actually treat an inductor in a circuit like a resistor if you don't, if you're not worried about the phase relationship, um, it does actually have an AC resistance. And just like regular Ohm's law, voltage on current equals resistance, or in this case, the AC resistance XL. <laughs> Easy. So if you're not worried about the phase component, the, i.e. the complex uh, component, which is J here, um, XL can be just um, omega L or 2 pi F. L, and that's how it's often represented because it's easy to understand. A lot of people still don't quite get the omega thing. It's just two pi, it's a shorthand way of writing two pi f. So two times pi times uh, frequency times the inductance in Henry. So just like a resistor, the higher the resistance, the greater the, uh, the impedance to the current in the circuit. Same thing with the inductor here. The higher the frequency for a given inductor, so as your frequency goes up, your, in AC, your AC resistance or inductive reactance goes up and impedes the flow of current in the circuit. Simple. And capacitance, exactly the same as inductance, except everything's sort of turned on its head. Once again, we can go back to our civil uh, acro visual acronym here. And if for a capacitance, the inductance leads the voltage or the voltage lags. And so that's what we get on our waveform down here. The voltage is, we start as, as a reference like this. You can see that the current is already uh, leading that current is leading the voltage there in terms of phase. The circuit's still the same, the instantaneous formula is still exactly the same as what we had before, um, except we've got a capacitor, pure capacitance, uh, as we talked about pure inductance, we're just talking about a pure capacitance in series, and I've covered capacitors in other videos, but of course when you initially put, try to put a current through a capacitor, the current will flow, because it's a basically a short circuit when you first uh, switch it on, the current will flow, and only then will the voltage sort of lag behind that, and that's what you see here as soon as you turn it on at time zero, the current goes to absolute maximum here, but the voltage is zero and it hasn't had time to rise up yet. That's why it's lagging. 
because you need time to build the voltage up on the plates uh, as the current flows through the capacitor. Oh, I've done a whole video on that, through. You remember how I said everything's turned on its head compared to the inductance? Well, that includes our rate of uh, change here. Our rate of change, remember it was voltage equals inductance times uh, the rate of change of uh, current with time, but now it's current equals the uh, capacitance times the rate of change of voltage, not the current. Everything's flipped on its head. And of course that rate of change is no longer uh, amps per second, it's volts per second. And you'll notice our equation for the instantaneous current has also changed. It used to be Vmax on omega L. Well, now it's, uh, there's no division there. It's multiplication, omega C times Vmax sine of omega T. And it was minus 90 degrees before, but because we've shifted in the opposite direction, it's now positive 90 degrees. And likewise, that leads to a flip in our equation here. Our I max uh, before was uh, V max on omega L. Well, now it's omega C times V max. And likewise, the RMS current is omega C of volts RMS. And just like inductive reactants, we have capacitive reactants once again in ohms. Once again, it's an AC resistance and uh, our magnitude of XC uh, is now one over omega C in ohms. And from that, it follows that the voltage on the uh, current here, which of course, voltage on current is, is ohms, exactly there. Uh, it's one on omega C with uh, an angle of 90 degrees here. And it's a positive 90 degrees, just like we had up here. But if we take that angular component out from under there, it then becomes from positive to uh, negative 90 degrees over there. And then we get our final equation for our capacitive reactants, Xc. It's called is one on J omega C. So we have to, so we've converted from polar to rectangular uh, form again and if you take the complex j part out like that it becomes minus j1 on omega c and that is your capacitive reactance formula whereas the capacitive inductance you saw was uh, j omega l and of course voltage divided by current equals your ac resistance or your capacitive reactance easy it's just sort of flipped on its head compared to inductors and yes, we can have a phasor diagram for that instead of the inductance going negative 90 degrees like this. Our pure capacitive circuit goes positive 90 degrees like that because the current leads the voltage over here. So that is basic AC circuit theory for resistors, inductors, and capacitors. It's not too hard at all. Remember, you get a capacitive reactance and an inductive reactance. That's different to impedance. I'll have to do that in another video. So I hope you found that video useful. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. And as always, you can discuss down below in the comments or over on the EV blog forum and check out my new merch store over on TeePublic. I've got new uh, design uh, t-shirts, hats, stickers, all sorts of stuff down in the merch store. Check it out. Catch you next time.